Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly address a whole bunch of envelopes. So this project is great if you have more than, let's say 10 envelopes and you need to address them for a party or a wedding or holiday cards. So I'm going to show you how to do this using your computer and a home printer. And in the past, I've showed you how to use your Cricut and write on your envelopes or even make printable labels. So I will link to those videos in the video description. But today I will show you how to use your computer and a home printer. All right, let's get started. To start, we are going to open up a blank Microsoft Word document. This is needed for this project. So I'm using Microsoft Word. I will link to the version I'm using, but mail merges have been around for a long time. The first mail merge I did was at my first real job. So I know it's been around for a while and I'll walk you through how to set it up. So our page comes in automatically at eight and a half by 11, but today we are using those 5.25 by 7.25 envelopes. So we'll want to resize our page to fit whatever type of envelopes you're using. So go ahead and measure your envelope to make sure that you're using the correct size. And then we'll resize our page appropriately. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll have a menu bar and you'll want to navigate to file and then page setup. You'll set up your page according to your printer. So I'm using a wide format Canon and we'll click on the paper size here. You can click on that. And then I've set up a custom size. To set up a custom size, you can click manage custom sizes. And I'll delete this one so I can add it with you. And you'll click on the plus sign here. And then we can type in envelope. And our width is 5.25. Oops, I lied. Our width is 7.25. And our height is 5.25. And I'm going to zero out everything so that our entire envelope is printable. Okay, so those are the settings I have. I'm going to hit OK. And then now my paper size is set up to the envelope size. And I can click your screen will resize to match the look of your envelope. And now we can start formatting where we want addresses and all that good stuff to go. You can easily type out envelopes and you know type out the name and the address one by one, but that seems to take a long time and you also have you run the risk of making a mistake on typing the address. So we will not be doing that today. Instead, I'm going to set up a mail merge so that we can pull from an Excel spreadsheet to get all your information. So to start, I'm going to click insert here and I'm going to draw a text box. The text box will allow me to center my information in the middle of my envelope and we can format this to look however you want. So there's a formatting pane over on the right. If you click on that. You can play with the fill. I'm going to choose no fill. If you want a line around your box, you can choose that. I'm going to say no line so that I just have a text block where I can type my information in. I'm also going to make a copy of that by hitting control C. Oops, it didn't, oh, it did copy, okay. So um, I, on the keyboard, I'll do that one more time, but I'm clicking on my box and then command and C at the same time, and then command and V to make a copy and then that way I can add my return address in the top. Since this will be the same on every envelope, I'm just going to type out my information. One, two, three, Main Street. We'll do Lake Forest, California, 92630, since that's where I grew up. Okay, so I have my information and we will be able to beautify that and make that however you want it to look. Once you have your text box set up, we need to tell Microsoft Word where to get the, in the information for your addresses. I like to use Postable. This is not sponsored. This is just a website that I've been using since I got married. When I was planning my wedding, I started using it back in like 2014. So I've been using it for a while and definitely love and recommend it. The reason I love it is because you can create an address book and you can manually click on add new contact and then just type in all of their information. You can do email, phone number, birthday, spouse's name. It's great. And then it will also notify you when their birthdays are coming up so you can send a card if you'd like. 
You also have the option to send out a link to them. So it would be like postable.com slash Carly. And they can input their own information. And I definitely recommend that because they will add their email address. And then you can send out an email once a year that says, hey, is your information still correct? Please update it before you send out an email, which I love. So I've added 10 fake addresses in here. And I intentionally added one with a mistake just so that I can show you what will happen when we export that information. So at the top, there's an export button here and we're going to export our contacts. This will create an Excel spreadsheet and I'll open it up so you can see how cool this is. So in the Excel spreadsheet, you have their title, their first name, middle name, last name, partners names, names together, um, names formal, names super formal, so if you're getting married, names, family name, and then their address and all the other information that you can collect. So we'll save this onto our desktop so we know where it is. Desktop, YouTube, video, and save. And then we're going to go back over to our Microsoft Word document. So again, you have all of their information in this Excel spreadsheet. So you could copy and paste one by one if you had a small number, but since this is recommended for more than, I'd say, 10 envelopes, we are going to mail merge it. So back to Microsoft Word, I'm going to tell this program where to get the information. Up at the top, there is a tab called Mailings. So we'll click on that. And then we are going to tell Microsoft Word to link to that Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to click Select Recipients and then use an existing list. Next, you'll locate where that spreadsheet is. I saved mine onto the desktop, so I will find that and click Open. Just make sure you trust the source. We do, so click Yes. And we want the entire worksheet, so we can just say OK. All right, now you'll notice that you have this new option here that says Insert Merge Field. So we can click on that, and you'll see that it pulled from the spreadsheet all of those columns that I was just talking about. So since I'm sending out holiday cards, I'm going to do the family name. But if you were doing wedding invitations, you could do the name super formal. Um, you could do them however you'd like. So we're going to do the names family and then click enter and insert their address. So address one, space, address two, if there's an apartment number or unit number, enter. And then we're going to do the city, comma, state, space, and the postal code. Again, we can play around with how this looks, but you can kind of get an idea of what we are going to see. So if you want to preview what your information pulled from the spreadsheet, you can click on preview results and you can see that it will pull the information from that spreadsheet. I can go to the next one. This is my mistake one that I'll show you how to fix. And you can scroll through and see all of the addresses, which is super neat because if you know that you have an incorrect address, you have the ability to edit that. So before we go on to print, I want to make this super cute and pretty. So back up at the top, we're going to navigate to home and now we can play with the fonts. So the first font, click home, and we can play around with all the fonts. So pumpkin harvest is a favorite right now and we can adjust the size to be whatever size we want. And then I can even make this a different font if I'd, if I'd like. So Avenir next, let's make that a little bit more bold. I can also highlight everything and center it or justify it. So you can really get creative. I can also change the color and the position. So for this one, I'm going to match the fonts. I'm going to choose pumpkin harvest and increase the size. And then choose Avenir Next Ultra, a little bold, and highlight both and center it. So you can see that you really have control over customizing this as much or as little as you want. Once you're happy with how the text looks, you can align these to make them look how you want. So I have this layout tab here and then these align tools. So if I want to align my address to the center of my envelope, I can click align center. 
I also recommend pulling out these handles so that you can accommodate for a longer last name. So let's do that again, Align Center. And you, again, can make this look however you want. You can add graphics. So if you wanted to add um, some pretty florals or anything really, you can add those onto your envelope. Just make sure that you don't add a graphic all the way to the bottom since you do need the envelope to be able to be scanned through USPS. But you can play around with this and make this look however you'd like. So once you're happy, I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Once you're happy with how your envelope looks, you can review it in your mailing tab. So we're going to click on the mailings. And then I just like to click through to make sure all the names fit the way that I want them to fit. All right, so all 10 look good. One other note, make sure that you leave enough room for your stamp in the upper right hand corner. Once you're done with the design of your envelope, you can click finish and merge. And we are going to choose individual documents, edit individual documents. You can also go straight to printing, but I would recommend editing the individual files just to ensure everything looks correct. So we're going to scroll through. And like I said, I knew I had one address that was incorrect. So the first name was entered in the last name spot. So I'm going to delete that out. And you can see that I can edit this one individual file without changing anything else. Scroll through and make sure all the other addresses are correct. And we're good to go. Okay, so once you are happy with how they look, we are going to print them. So up at the top, we'll click File and then scroll down to Print. You'll see that it looks how we want it to look on our envelope and you can click Print All or the current page or a selection of the envelope that you need to print. I'm just going to print the current page so that we don't print 10 fake addresses. And I'm going to show you how to set up the printer settings. At the top, we'll choose media and quality. And I'm going to feed from the rear tray and I'm using an envelope. So you can see here I have these different options. I'm choosing rear tray and I'm choosing envelope and I want my quality to be best. Before I click print, I'm going to show you a little tip that I like to do when I start printing any big project. So let's grab a paper cutter and a piece of scrap paper to get this started. So I have my Cricut paper trimmer. You can use any paper trimmer for this. And we're going to trim our sheet down to fit the dimensions of our envelope. So 7.25 by 5.25. So you can see here's my envelope and here is my template. And on my template, I'm going to write front and then bottom and top. Okay, so here's my little template and we're going to load this into the printer so that we don't waste an envelope in case it prints out incorrectly. I'm using my Canon printer and we're going to load in our template with the top at the top and the bottom at the bottom. And I'm just going to make sure that the guides are squeezed in to fit around and close in my paper. I'm going to click print. We'll just want to confirm that we want to print with the loaded paper. All right, so my tip to know which way to load your envelope. So I have my envelope here. And what you're going to do is place your text on your envelope like you'd want it to print out. So my return address is here and the flap is at the top. And so we know that we loaded this into the bottom. So we're going to flip our envelope, remove our paper, and then load our envelope into the printer just like this. If you're printing a whole bunch of envelopes, you can load in more than one at the same time and then click print. And here we have our envelope. So you can see that my return address is in the upper left, the address is in the center, and the flap opens correctly. So now I know from this point forward that when I load the rest of my envelopes in, I just need to load them down. And your printer may be different, so just play around with that test sheet so you know which way to load your material. I recently printed out my holiday card envelopes, but I added a little graphic at the bottom 
so that you can just warm up your envelope and add a personal touch, which I think is super fun. But again, these are really quick and easy to make so that you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time addressing your envelopes and you can spend time working on all the other projects that I'm sure you're doing right now. So again, really easy to do. I will link all the products I'm using in today's video. And if you have any questions about anything, let me know. I really do recommend using a template so you don't waste any of your expensive envelopes. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. That really helps out my channel. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.